finally for today I will show you some examples and uh, well uh, you will see that I will quickly go over this and uh, I ask you to follow the proof in the PDF rather than me just giving you any detail and I think that's the reason why today's lecture will be a little bit shorter than usual because you will need some additional time for that. Okay, so the question is, uh, if we have a source condition, can we actually derive um, orders of convergence for our regularization methods? And we need to do that for every method individually. So uh, we start with truncated SVD. Um, let me remind you, truncated SVD, we had G alpha of sigma is zero for sigma smaller than alpha, one over sigma for sigma larger than alpha. It's not starting good. And uh, so then, of course, the um, norm of the operator is bounded by one over alpha. Okay, uh, so the phi mu of alpha that we need to look at was defined as sigma to the two mu, mu plus one, g alpha of sigma minus sigma of two mu. And uh, the max, we are looking for the maximum of this. But uh, in this case, this is very easy because, uh, I mean, if um, alpha, if sigma is smaller than alpha, then uh, this is exactly alpha to the two mu. If sigma is larger than alpha, then uh, this goes completely away and the difference is zero. So of course the maximum is uh, uh, the alpha to the two mu. And um, yeah, the total error that we have is now according to our formula, C alpha times delta, where C alpha is the bound of our regularized operator, plus mu, phi mu of alpha times the norm of V. We don't know what V is, so it's already clear that we will only be able to determine rates up to a constant, but this is perfectly fine. Okay, so plugging in C alpha is one over alpha, we have delta over alpha plus alpha to the two mu times the norm of V. And of course, we want to choose alpha such that this bound is minimal. Remember, we need to choose the regularization parameter based on delta. So um, taking the derivative with respect to alpha, we find that an optimal value for alpha is given by well, a constant times delta to the one over two mu plus one. And uh, the final value, so if we plug this in, then what is now the bound on the error? The error bound is now C times delta to the two mu over two mu plus one times another constant. So we see that uh, using our regularization method and using an optimal regularization parameter, we get an error rate, so we, we can uh, bound the error by a constant times delta to the two mu, two mu plus one, and uh, two mu over two mu plus one, we call the rate with which the error goes to zero with delta. Now, uh, first of all, that's always, small. no matter how we choose mu, uh, what um, uh, restrictions we impose on uh, u plus, um, this is almost always smaller than one, and that's no surprise. We already proved that uh, an, for, an, um, for an inverse problem, for an, imp for an ill post problem, uh, the rate can never be one. So this is smaller than one, and that's fine. Then uh, this is monotically um, ri rising, rising, growing. This is growing with mu. And uh, that's fine too, because uh, the higher mu is, the more restrictions we have. And uh, that means that we should get better results. Um, yeah, gets better with mu and that's, that's what I wanted to say, right. Okay, so um, the, the rate is not one, but we can get as close to one as we want.
that's true for the singular value decomposition. Now let's look at Lavrentiev. There we had uh, G alpha of sigma, so our regularizing function is one over sigma plus alpha. The norm of the operator, uh, of the regularizing operator is bound by one over alpha. We again look at uh, this uh, phi alpha of uh, sigma and take its uh, maximum with respect for, for to sigma in the interval from zero to um, sigma one. And uh, plugging this in and doing some computation, we uh, find that this is the same as sigma to the two mu, the uh, sigma to the two mu minus one times sigma alpha over sigma plus alpha. And this is so now we look at this for mu larger than one half. Then this is increasing, and this is increasing too, with respect to sigma. And uh, that means it takes its ma maximum value when we set sigma equal to sigma one. And so now the, uh, the, uh, that um, quantity is bound by this term. For zero in between, uh, for mu in between zero and one half, and we said that makes sense uh, going back to our last theorem. Um, we need to take the derivative uh, which uh, of this function which I did and with some computation you find what the that uh, sigma is x uh, what um, that um, this function takes its maximum at sigma equal to this and uh, doing some more math, you find that in fact phi alpha is bound by c mu times alpha to the two mu. Okay, um, so now of course again what we want to do is we want to minimize the final error. For the first case, mu larger than one half, the error is given by one over alpha, that was the operator norm, times delta, plus what did we have here? Sigma one to the two mu alpha over sigma one plus, plus alpha times the norm of v. And uh, yeah, um, we choose delta, we choose alpha in such a way that both of the, the rates we get here are the same. So if we set alpha equals to a square root of delta, then here we have a rate of square root of delta. Here we have a, a rate of square root of delta again. So both terms are of all of square root of delta. You can't get any better than that. And uh, so independent of mu, if mu is larger than one half, we arrive at a, an, a, at a range of square root of delta. Okay, uh, second case, uh, mu is smaller than one half, then uh, the error is bounded by one over alpha times delta, That's the same of course, plus this time, this is the error bound plus c mu alpha to the two mu times the norm of v. Again, we choose alpha in such a way that uh, both terms are of the same order. Now, this is the case now for delta to the one over two mu plus one. Um, and in that case, we have an order of um, delta of two mu over two mu plus one, which is less than one half if mu is smaller than one half. Okay, so in this case, we find it's st the order is still increasing with mu, but um, there's a limit. Um, if we go beyond mu um, equals to one half, we we reach the maximum order already. So it doesn't make sense to use uh, to uh, choose mu larger than one half. So, so um, knowing more about the solution doesn't help in this in this case, right? So. This is the quality of this uh, of this of, um, of this method, and the maximum rate we can achieve for this method is one half. Now um, I'm not going to do completely the same thing for Tikhonov. Again, um, here's our regularizing function that defines uh, the SVD regularization. The norm of the operator is bounded by one over two alpha. And this time we assume that mu is larger or equal to one. And uh, while writing down the error functional as before, we can do exactly the same thing as before. We can split it up. 
we find that now if, if mu uh, is larger or equal to one, then this is increasing, this is increasing as well. So this is bounded by the largest eigen by the largest value of sigma. So it's bounded by alpha squared, sigma one squared, and you, you see it here. Okay, uh, again, the total error is what we're interested in. How do we have, do we have to choose alpha to, to minimize it? We have the total error is delta over two delta over two alpha plus alpha squared this time and sigma one to the two mu alpha squared plus sigma one squared. Again, what is the optimal rate? Well, if you choose delta to be uh, uh, the uh, third root alpha to be the third root of delta then uh, we have that this term is of the order delta to the two-third, yes, and this one is on, of the order of delta to the two-third as well. So um, we choose, um, if we make that choice, then uh, we get an error rate of delta to the two-third. And I'm, I'm not going to do this. Um, if mu is smaller than one, what we can achieve is an, a rate of delta to the two mu over one um, <laughs> over one plus two mu. And I didn't write the down the, uh, the rate for the optimal choice for alpha here, but uh, anyway, that's what's come out. Oh, by the way, just a remark. Um, I did this very thoroughly and try to do it right but um, actually I have three manuscripts that I look at uh, whether my um, my lemmas and, and whether my uh, uh, calculations are actually correct I got the constants here in all three scripts differently and um, I'm now adding a fourth version so um, I'm not sure whether this is absolutely correct, but everybody has the rate correctly. So the alpha to the two mu is the important point here. And uh, that's what everybody has. So I'm quite sure that this is right. Okay, um, so for these three, oops, for these three examples, we could give optimal rates. What are the conclusions? Well, the conclusions are the rate is always between zero and one. That was true for all our methods, and that's what we expected. Uh, the rate is monotonous increasing with mu, but sometimes it stops at some point. And uh, if it does that, then we call that point the qualification of the regularization. And uh, uh, for our examples, that would mean for truncula truncated singular value decomposition, it made more and more sense to make mu as high as possible. So um, there's no limit on mu. So the um, so the qualification would be infinite. For Tikhonov, uh, we had the limit of one. And uh, so, uh, because we call two mu the qualification, the qualification is uh, is uh, two here. And for Lavrentiev, uh, we had that the improvement stops at one half. So the qualification of Lavrentiev is one. Also, we should notice that uh, for TSVD, the error rate can get as good as possible. We can get as close uh, to one as we want. For Tikhonov, the maximum error rate is two third. Uh, and for Lavrentiev, the maximum error rate we can get is one half. That's what we proved. Okay, uh, finally, let me point out a completely different method of choosing alpha. I mean, the the alpha, um, the optimal alpha that we computed depended on many constants we will not usually have in a concrete problem. So uh, when solving an inverse problem, we are facing the, uh, the task of choosing a regularization parameter 
in an optimal way without completely knowing one of the um, uh, of the um, of the constants that were in there. In particular, we won't know what the v is, right? I mean, uh, we are just assuming that um, that the minimum norm solution is in the range of k star k, but um, we don't know what actually the source for that u plus is. So um, there's an interesting idea that uh, was proposed by Morozov many, many years ago. And the idea was the following. If you have to choose, if, if you have to solve an inverse problem of the form KU equals G, and uh, G delta, and G is known only up to an error level of delta, then it doesn't make sense to, uh, to solve K, uh, uh, KU equals G exactly, but rather we should somehow solve it in such a way that KU minus G should be on the error level of delta as well. So it should not, we, sh we should not choose KU minus G equals to, uh, to, zero, to zero, but uh, we should try to solve KU minus G norm equals to delta. So we're looking, we're, from the beginning, we're looking for a function that um, gives us an error for a regularized solution that gives us an error level of delta. Um, how can we give a reason for that? Um, well, if we plug in our k alpha plus g for the optimal alpha um, in uh, into Let's assume for a second that uh, G is known exactly. And uh, let's, um, however, we assume that there's an error, error level of delta and uh, assume that we have chosen alpha to um, all in an optimal way based on the analysis we just did. So uh, K alpha plus G, K alpha plus G will not solve the normal equation exactly, but um, let's let's try what what the uh, what the discrepancy is. So uh, we uh, we um, we compute K times that approximation minus G, and uh, we can write this down in terms of the V K because G and K K uh, K K plus g are in the range of the vk. And uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Write both over here in terms of the vk, then g can be written as sum of all uh, g and vk squared times um, vk, so taking the norm that get boils down to something like sum over g to the vk squared and uh, plugging in the definition of the, uh, of the uh, singular value regularization, regularization here and observing that um, mul the multiplication with k um, uh, boils down to uh, multiplication with sigma k uh, with respect to the uh, um, to the singular vectors, we arrive at something like this, yeah, right? So we've done this several times. I should just have written it down. Okay, uh, now uh, what we do is uh, we plug in our uh, source condition. So uh, I divide this by uh, uh, to uh, by. Oops, I had a typo here, which I corrected. So, um, I divide this by um, the right hand side by sigma over two mu plus one. Now, and I get the, uh, the factor that two mu plus one over here then. And uh, according to our analysis in, analysis in the last proof, this over here is bounded by the norm over v squared. Just go back to the, uh, to the proof there. 
Okay, so uh, if this is bounded, then the whole sum is bounded by phi mu plus one half alpha of sigma, because this is exactly the same as the uh, phi mu, uh, which we had about it, but replaced two mu plus, here we have two mu plus one and two mu plus two. So if we replay, if we look at phi mu plus one half, then this is exactly the definition which we had above for phi mu. Okay, um, so we find that the difference, the discrepancy uh, between the data and what we get when we insert our approximation into the operator um, is on the order of this quantity here. Okay, but um, if, for example, we look at uh, truncated singular value decomposition, we find that uh, we had computed alpha of delta is delta over one over two mu plus one. Phi mu of alpha is alpha to the two mu. And now if we look at this quantity here, that is phi mu plus one half over alpha of delta. Alpha of delta was delta over one over two mu plus one. Phi mu plus one half is alpha to the two mu plus one. So plugging in this is nothing, nothing but delta. And of course, up to a constant we have that norm V over here and so on. So up to a constant, this is delta. So the idea be, so uh, for the optimal value of alpha, we have a discrepancy of constant times alpha. And observe that this is something we can actually compute if we replace G with G delta. So now the idea is, if you have a given an approximation, um, u plus, which is k alpha plus g delta, u delta plus, which is k alpha plus g delta, check. whether k times k alpha plus k, k times u delta plus minus g delta is on the order of delta. If that is the case, that is some indication that alpha of delta is uh, chosen correctly, is chosen fine. And um, if it is not, if it's much higher, if it's much lower, then we should choose a different regularization parameter. And um, I think you're going to test that in the next homework. <laughs>